Hey what is going on everybody, it's your boy Nick here. Today we're going to talk a little bit about things that you might not know about your desktop monitor. Now I've did a couple of research because recently I had to purchase one for myself. So if you want to check out this whole custom PC build thing, I will leave the link down in the description box below. So today we're going to touch on several technical terms such as input lag, response time, ghosting, you know, these are the kind of things that you would come across um, for someone who wants to purchase a brand new monitor. And also most importantly, we're going to talk about the differences between displays that might suit you the best. Let's find out. So first of all, let's begin with IPS panel. This is the panel where I sit. It's comfortable for people who wants to edit videos, photos, and things like that. Um, the good side of this is that it has very, very good color reproduction, very accurate most of the time. It has good viewing angles. Yeah, so, you know, usually monitors like the TN panel, if you're looking from a different view, the color might start to shift. So that's not what we want when we are editing videos or photos, right? We want everything to be um, very accurate in terms no matter where we're looking at it. But that also comes with a cost. IPS panel is the most expensive compared to the others. And at the same time, you also don't get a very high refresh rate. I mean, they do, that means you need to pay a little bit more. But mostly the refresh rate is kept at 60 Hz for most IPS panels out there right now. And also for response time, it's also a little bit on the heavier side, you know, because usually if you have a higher response time, that means there is more um, possibility that you might see ghosting. So ghosting, this term is whereby if you're, let's say, playing a game and you're moving very quickly with your mouse, the pixels on your monitor might not be able to switch as fast, so you might see a little bit from the previous frame. Um, the response time on an IPS panel isn't really that great, so for response time, the lesser, the better. Alright, so next up, TN panel. This is the panel for gamers. And this is also the panel that you will mostly see in the market because it is very, very cheap to reproduce. So what are the pros of a TN panel? Well, gamers, usually what they aim for is a high refresh rate and also a very low response time, which is what a TN panel gives you exactly. For a fact, it's cheap, but you do have to sacrifice on the color reproduction side and also it has very, very bad viewing angles. I personally own two TN panels and I don't really like it, I have to say, because let's say if you're watching a movie with your friends and if they're not seeing the monitor directly, they will see a bit of color shift and also blurry images from the side, which is very uncomfortable to be honest. But hey, if you're a professional gamer, if you want something cheap, high refresh rate, low response time, you gotta make some sacrifices, but the TN panel will not do you wrong. And for our last panel, it's called the VA panel. And I personally think this gives you the best of both worlds, IPS and also TN. So like these two basically created a kit. So pricing wise for a VA panel, it's not that bad surprisingly. It's pretty reasonable. It gives you good color reproduction, good viewing angles, um, pretty high refresh rate, around 120 to 144 hertz, which is damn good actually. And you also get a pretty low response time. Now, for my monitor over here, this has a four millisecond response time. And for a TN panel, for the one for professional gamers, the response time is usually around one to two milliseconds. But if you're just a semi-casual pro player, you know, you trust me, you wouldn't even notice the difference. And I personally can speak from experience because the monitor that I have here, this is a 27 inch curved VA panel with 144 hertz and 4 milliseconds of response time. This is the Acer ED273A, if I'm not mistaken. I will leave a link in the description box below if you'd like to check this out. Also, one thing about 144Hz is that I'm pretty sure if you watch enough YouTube videos, you would understand that um, it's impossible to tell you how it's like and to show you what 144Hz is like. So go to a gaming shop or whatever near you, test it out, and once you go back to 60 frames per second or 30, you would realize that it's very different. This thing is like a beast. 
And actually, I didn't really have to worry much about V-Sync because as you know, V-Sync will cap your frame rates to 60 and it creates a lot of input lag. Input lag basically meaning the time that you press on your mouse and the differences between that and also the bullet firing from your monitor. If you have a 144Hz monitor, you don't have to worry anything about screen tearing. Screen tearing only happens when your monitor is 60 frames per second and your graphics card can push more than that. So because you have so many frame rates, the monitor isn't able to display all of that and that's why uh, that's how screen tearing is produced. Okay, so putting things in simple term, if you have a 144Hz monitor, you don't need V-Sync, therefore no input lag. Done. Alright, so that's pretty much a wrap for today's video. I hope you learned something like I did. I learned a lot. If you have any questions about buying a new monitor, don't hesitate to leave a comment down in the description box below. I will try my best to reply you. Thank you all so much for watching. My name is Nicholas, and I will see you guys in my next one. Bye-bye.